Jonathan, thank you for that song. Isn't it good to know that God's been with us through the journey of life? It's always good to know that he's with us in the ups and the downs, and he's with us in every turn of life, and it's just so good to know that there's a lot of different experiences that we go through, and when we go through those experiences, God has always proved himself to be strong and to be there and to be for us. And I just pray this morning, if you're going through a very difficult time in your life, uh, just remember that there's a tomorrow and that there's a God who's with you today and there's a God who will be with you tomorrow. And so it's a lot to be thankful for just to know that God is with us in the journey uh, during whatever the course of life may, may entail. This morning, I would like for us to return again to First Timothy is where we're going to find ourselves this morning as I continue to preach through First Timothy. And this morning, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is being an example. And you know, when Paul was trying to share with young Timothy from a pastoral perspective, there were times in this journey that the Apostle Paul would continue to try to encourage young Timothy. But one of the primary ways that he would encourage young Timothy was he would simply tell him that in the process of being there and being a minister or being a part of the local body of believers, in this whole process, it is great to set forth and to be a good example. And I believe that we're living in a time today to where we need some good examples. Amen? We need good examples set before us. And I believe that being a good example is a very important uh, impression that we can make upon other people's lives. And so Paul begins to deal with that here in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And what I would like for us to do is let's pick up in verse 11 of chapter 4, and we're going to read down to the end of the chapter, down to verse 16, and listen to what Paul has to tell young Timothy. He begins with these words. He says, these things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, and in faith and in purity. Till I come, give attention to the reading, to the exhortation, and to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy with the lying on of the hands of the presbytery. He says, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them. He says that thy profiting may appear to all. And then he says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them for the doing of this, thou shalt save thyself and them that hear thee. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we're thankful for your presence. We're thankful that you love us. Father, we're thankful for your holy word and for what your word means to our lives. And Father, I just pray now that as we embark upon these few moments that we have, Father, that they will be moments where we can reflect upon your word and let your word speak to our hearts and minister to our lives but father may your word be undergirded by the unction of your holy spirit as we see the holy spirit apply your word to our hearts and to our lives and father i just pray now that you'll bless these few moments that we have as i surrender this message unto you in jesus christ's name amen when we look at this passage of scripture we see how that the Apostle Paul, of course, was giving Timothy some great encouragement. But the primary focus here is simply this, being an example. And you know, I will be honest with you, most of us here today would honestly say this, that none of us can call ourselves a perfect example. None of us are the ideal perfect example. However, we need to be a good example, amen? We need to be a good example. And when we think about that, the Apostle Paul here in this text was giving Timothy some great words of advice. And what we see here is that he was basically trying to tell him sometimes one might assert independence 
by ignoring the experience of the aged. Wow, did you hear what I just said? <laughs> now, I'm going I'm to read that quote again. Listen to me. Sometimes one might assert independence by ignoring the experience of the aged. And what he was trying to tell him was, Timothy, look, what we've got to realize in the journey is age and experience is vitally important. And friends, I want to tell you something, that is true in every walk of life. Do you know that it is true in young preachers, young church members, in occupational aspects of life? Let me tell you what, you get a machinist that has 30 years of machine experience and you get a young guy that just gets out of vocational school, he has a lot to learn. Yeah. You get a young nurse that's got like three or four years compared to one that's got 40 years under her belt. I got news for you, friends. She knows a lot. And it's true in every example. I don't know if you work at the city in codes, David. Uh, it, it longer you're there, you know, you've learned a lot. You get some young, fresh guy that comes in and you know what will happen? He has a lot to learn. I'll go ahead and share this with you. Many of you know Captain Jack. That's one of our, uh, one, he's faithful. I think he's out, he's out at sea today, I think. And uh, he's been a captain for years and years and years. And he's told me before, he said, Steve, he said, it's something else. And I said, what's that? He said, you get these young college graduates with maritime graduates out of Texas, like Texas A&M, and they're just in their mid-20s. He said, lo and behold, put them on a ship. He said, man, you better watch out. He's been a captain for years and years. Do you know that in the Christian journey and in our faith, it's a lot like that? We all have a lot to go through and experience that God may bring us to a place of maturity. But here's the thing. In that process of time, regardless of where we are in that chronological time period, God has a place for all of us. And even when we're young in the faith, we must remember some valuable, important principles that are so truthful found in the Word of God. When we think about that, how does one win the confidence of an older generation? I'm going to ask you a question again. How do you win the confidence of an older generation? It's so important. Listen to Paul's pieces of advice that he gives to Timothy because Timothy was there in the beginning of the, of the new church era in a new area, and Paul was trying to implement wisdom into his life. And when he was trying to do that, he gave him some major principles for him to remember straight out of this particular passage of Scripture. One of the first things I want us to notice in this text is what we find in verse 12. And in verse 12, Timothy was given the advice to lead by example. Wow. Paul tells him to lead by example. Listen to what he says in verse 12. He says, let no man despise thy youth, which what he's saying is this. You may be young in the faith and you may be, you know, relatively not really spiritually mature, but just because you don't or because you're not, don't feel intimidated, but at the same time, you still have some responsibility. Amen? You really, really do. So Paul gives Timothy some advice concerning that he needs to lead by example. Timothy himself was to be an individual who could lead with silent criticism by his conduct that he was going to be and to live. What do you mean by that, Brother Steve? I'll simply mean this. Timothy was given the advice to be silent in his criticism by his conduct that he was going to set forth. And my friends, let me share something with you. That is vitally important in our lives when it comes to being an ideal example that God would have us to be. The Apostle Paul begins to implement into young Timothy's life some major principles and I want you to notice 
what he has to say. Paul shares with Timothy these elements that are so important. He says, first of all, you've got to remember to be a good example, it must be that which is a good example, he says, in word. To be a good example in word. And that means simply this. It just means to be truthful. To be an example in such a way that you're going to be truthful in dealing with things in relationships. So when he tells him, he says, look, I want you to know, young Timothy, what you've got to remember is that if you're going to be a leader or to be used in the kingdom of God and to be an individual that God can use, you're going to have to be an example before God's people. An example is vitally important. You must be truthful in your word. Secondly, he also says here, in your conversation or in your conduct, which basically means the way in which one communicates with others. And my friends, let me share something with you. When it comes to communication within the life of the church, the way in which we function and operate with one another, the communication that we have with one another is vitally important. And you, you and I must realize to lead in the kingdom's ministry, that must be present. And it will come with maturity and with time. But he's telling young Timothy, make sure that this is an ingredient of your life. It's so important. So not only in word and in conversation, but then he says, young Timothy, you must remember that in this whole process of this, there must be a spirit of charity or love. Now, <laughs> let me share something with you. Do you know that you can be the most glamorous one? That everybody thinks that it's just absolutely great. But if you can't love, your usefulness is limited. I'm rather, never forget one time Brother Henry Robertson told me something. He said, Brother Steve, he said, there's something you're going to have to always remember. And I said, what's that, Brother Henry? He said, people are going to fail you. And he said, you're going to have to love even through people's failures many a times. And you know, friends, that's a hard thing to do sometimes. But I got news for you, and I want to tell you something. You must remember two things. <laughs> if you stay in ministry and involved in the kingdom's work long enough, you're going to find out that that is a truthful statement. And if you stay in the kingdom work long enough, you know what else you're going to find out? There's times they're going to take people to have a whole lot of love to put up with you and me, too. <laughs> That's a two-way street. You know, look, I want to practice love, 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 and I got to do that as a pastor. But I know there's times that, you know, you, you got to put up with me too. And it takes, a, you go, got an amen on that. You, 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 it takes a whole lot of love from you to put up with me. Amen. I better move on to the next, next point pretty quickly. Isn't it? Amen. Well, let's move on to spirit, okay? Okay. But, but, but we need to be this example in word and conversation and charity. But then it also says in spirit. And that word, the concept here of in spirit simply means even in difficult times. Even when there are some difficult times, we have to make sure that we can rise and fly high with God that's what he's talking about there in spirit and then he says in faith and that means in loyalty being truthful to the word of God truthful to what God sets forth before us and so it's vitally important that Timothy understood that he needed to be faithful remain faithful to the word of God and remain faithful to the principles of God but then he moves on and he also says in purity and that simply means to be an individual who stays committed to Christ's standards. 
to what God has to say, what the Word of God has to say in application to our lives. So he's trying to tell young Timothy, he says, look, if you will practice these things, in the long run you can earn respect even while you're young. Let me tell you something. It's vitally important that we stay truthful to the Word of God, truthful to these principles that Timothy is given here by the Apostle Paul. And when that takes place, I want you to know something. You can earn respect, and when you earn the respect, you can lead God's people. That is so important. So when we think about this, Timothy could learn and actually earn respect even while he was beginning in early ministry, but by leading, he became a good example. And if you and I are involved in the kingdom's work, if we can lead by a good example, that is valuable to our lives and to the kingdom's work. It is so, so important. So when we think about being an example, we must realize that to be a good example, we must lead by being the good example in itself. So important. The second thing that the Apostle Paul shares with Timothy that is so important for us to think about in regard to being a good example, he says this in verse 13, that Timothy was to lead with biblical principles. To lead with biblical principles. Look what he says in verse 13. He says, until or till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. So he says, Timothy, if you're going to lead and be what God would have you to be, not only are you to be an example, but you need to also lead in biblical principles. And by that, he was telling him at that particular time in the early church, you need to be involved in the reading of the Word, the application of the Word. Let me share something with you, and I fully believe this. If you're a pastor or a leader in any church and the Word of God is not a part of your teaching, it will not be long where you will lose the respect of others. I really believe that from the depths of my heart because I believe that this is the infallible Word of God by this, we're able to make all doctrinal statements. It's so important. So he was trying to tell Timothy. He said, Timothy, you must remember that you must first and foremost stay in the Word of God by publicly making it applicable and elevating the Scripture as the authority in the life of the New Testament church. So, so important. See, we must realize that while reading the Word, it would lead to expounding upon the Word. And when he would expound upon the Word, it would lead to the proclamation and the preaching of the Word of God. So he tells him that. He says, you must give attendance to the reading. And then he says, also to exhortation. Timothy was to lead with exhortation. And what in the world does that mean? It means simply by encouraging. To exhort means to encourage. Now, let me share something with you that I think is so important. And I'm going to make a statement. I want you to think about it for a moment. Do you know that as a pastor, you need to do more and more than preach hell, fire, and brimstone all the time? Let me go ahead and tell you something else. As a Christian, you may never stand in the pulpit, but the way that you live your daily life and people you come in contact with, if all they ever hear from you is constantly hellfire and brimstone, I got news for you folks. They're going to go on down the road and listen to another message. What do you mean by that, Brother Steve? Hey, I believe in hard preaching. There's things I say sometimes that my friends, I know that you may go home and eat Brother Steve for lunch. I know that. But I do also know this, that there are times in the journey of life, and I believe that everybody needs a little word of encouragement. Amen? Amen. 
People need exhortation. They need that. But the process of what he was talking about here was the process of the proclamation of the word, which means in your preaching of the word, let it be the proclamation for exhorting and for the aspect of edification. And people need to be edified and encouraged. So he says, young Timothy, listen, in the process of the preaching and the proclaiming of the word, make it in such a way that as you preach the word, it can be applicable to their lives. I've always said this. I'll never forget what Dr. Bryson, my preaching professor at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, told us. He always told us something. He said, let me tell you something. He says, something you must always remember. He says, preach sermons that meet people's needs. Think about that. Meet, preach sermons that meet people's needs. Why? Because every Sunday morning, somebody comes to church with something on their plate, something on their heart that may be completely different from somebody else. But if you'll preach messages that will meet the needs of God's people, God will take that and he'll use it in a powerful way. So, so important. So when we think about that, he was trying to tell young Timothy about the need for exhortation, encouragement in the proclamation of the word of God. But then he also says this. He told Timothy that he was to lead in doctrine. Wow. Look what he says. He says, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation. And he said doctrine. Why in the world did he say that for? Wow. Doctrine? Doctrine means teaching and instructions. That's what it's talking about. So when we think about that, he is trying to encourage Timothy to be a good example and make sure that what you're proclaiming and teaching stacks up with sound theology and sound instruction. So when we look at this, we must understand, listen to me carefully, we can be a good example based upon what we perceive and what we understand and make applicable from the Word of God. So, so important. You know what? Some people say, well, Brother Steve, that just sounds you're talking about. No, I'm, I'm talking about all of us. Are you ready? Listen to me carefully. When you're sitting at work at the lunch table, what you believe doctrinally and theologically is vitally important. So what you practice and teach at the lunch table, <laughs> out here at your workplace, let me tell you something, friends, that is so important. Make sure that you're sound to biblical truth. Now, some people look at me and they'll say, well, Brother Steve, I don't ever have a chance to preach at the lunch table. No, but you have a chance to be a witness. I have a chance to be a witness. And I have a chance every Sunday to be a witness here to make sure that we stay true to sound doctrine. And, you know, one of the main things in the life of a church is that it is so important that the ch pastor of the church remains solid and biblical in his theology. So, so important. Is he perfect? No, he may not be perfect, but he needs to make sure that his theology stacks up with scriptural soundness. Amen? So, so important. So he's trying to tell young Timothy, if you'll do that, then in the long run, you'll be a good example. You will be. I heard my mother say something about a radio speaker one time. And all I got to do is mention his name and you'd know him. But I'm not going to because then I'm going to be being critical of him. But my mama one time told me something. She said, I've listened to him on the radio. And I said, really, mama? She said, oh, yeah, one day he's a Baptist. Next week he's a Methodist. The next week he's a church of God. The next week, he's an assembly of God. Next week, he's a... Pen and she said, you never know what he's going to say he believes. Hmm. He's this doctrinal one way, this doctrinal the next week, and over here the next week. And my mama thought, Lord of mercy, he believes just about everything. <laughs> Let me tell you something, friends. Listen to me carefully. You become a good example by knowing where you stand theologically and to stand solid on the Word of God. So, so important.
So when we look at this, we must understand that he was trying to tell him that you lead by biblical principle. The application is this. May we be a good example living out biblical principles. And when we do that, we can help to edify others and glorify Christ. So important. The third thing that we notice in this text is vitally important is this. I want you to notice in verse 14 that Paul shares with Timothy something else that's important. And he was to tell Timothy that he was to lead in the area of giftedness. Now, some of you are saying, what, a, what are you trying to say? He was to lead in the area of giftedness. What, what does that mean, Brother Steve? Now, you've got to follow me on this because this is where a lot of people totally have a train wreck in ministry or in service. Listen to this carefully. Listen to what he says. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, this is verse 14, which was given thee by prophecy with the lying on of the hands of the presbytery. Now, when you think about that, let's think about this for a moment. What we must understand is one is to let God himself use the gifts that he has gifted us with. Huh. Whatever God has gifted you with, that's the area of giftedness that you need to stay in. God has not given us all the same gifts. We need to remember what God has done. And listen to what he says. Neglect not the gift, the definite article, the gift that is in thee, the prepositional in in the Greek is there, that's in thee. That's what he's saying. What we must understand is this. <clears throat> in our text, the passive verb that's used here was given in the text, which means God-given, not prophecy-given. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm going to be careful when I say this. You can get all the deacons in this church and all the pastors in this association and lay hands on a man's head, but if God ain't called him to preach, that's all you've done. <laughs> so what he was trying to tell him was this. When the elders laid their hands upon one, it was simply an accompanying act, not the means thereby. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, there's some people that say, well, I don't believe that God calls men to preach. Well, based on what you're preaching, I agree with you. <laughs> the man that God's called to preach is going to preach the whole counsel of God's word. That's what he's going to do. So we must understand that what he was trying to tell him was simple, simply this. The area that God has gifted you in, elders or deacons were there as a, just as an accompanying of supportiveness. That's what he was trying to tell them. God is the one that does the work in a man's heart. God is the gift giver in our lives. Be thankful for the God who is the gift giver in our lives. So important. The fourth thing I want us to look at in this text is simply this, is that the Apostle Paul was trying to tell Timothy that he was to lead with integrity. He is to lead with integrity. That's so, so important. Because in verse 15, he says, Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly unto them, that thy profiting may appear to all. So he was telling him, he was simply telling him, he says, look, Timothy, the last thing I want to tell you here is this. The way that you lead is by being an example, but the way that you lead is that your example is that of integrity. It is so important. Timothy was to lead with integrity that his life might illustrate to all the results of living for God. That is so, so important for us to understand. So when we think about that, we can also see that he moves on down with the continual application of integrity in verse 16. 
when he makes this statement. He says, take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt save thyself and them that hear thee. And I'm going to talk about that for a moment. When you look at that, remember this. Through living with integrity, Timothy might keep himself and others from heartache, from discouragement, from being misled, and from shipwreck. So that's what he was trying to, he wasn't talking about necessarily saving anybody's soul or saving his soul. It was saving them from what might come about because he was simply saying, Timothy, you've got to be an example. And if you're an example of integrity, it will influence those around you. And folks, that goes, oh Lordy, that goes from the church, from this house, to your house, to the state house, and to the White House. That's where it goes. And we must understand that integrity leaves a great example for men and women to live by. When we look at the advice that the Apostle Paul was giving to Timothy, being a good example, being a Christian example, carries a lot with it. One's integrity and one's impact and effect upon others. That's what he's trying to tell him. Now, some may say, well, Brother Steve, I understand what Timothy was being told here by the Apostle Paul. But how can that be made applicable in my life of being an example and staying focused? It's pretty simple by a verse of Scripture that's found in Psalm 139. And it goes something like this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way within me. And lead me in a way everlasting. My friends, let me share something with you. If you'll practice that, God will take care of your example. He'll do that. So when we think about that and we put all this together in a nutshell, there's probably a major question that we need to ask ourselves. And the question might be something like this. Is God trying to bring you and me along in a way that our faith might mature and might grow? And secondly, is there some decision or decision that you're needing to make in regard to the gospel of Jesus Christ and to his leadership in your life? I don't know everybody's heart here this morning, but there may be some this morning that could honestly say this. Brother Steve, I've heard the whole message, but I can't grasp the message because I don't know the Savior. And there may be some people here this morning, in all honesty, that you might say, you know, Brother Steve, I've heard all about Christianity. I know a lot about it. I've heard some things. But I don't really know what it means to accept Christ as my personal Savior. To have Christ to come into my heart and to be born again. You may be that person here this morning. And maybe that today is the day for your life to receive Christ. It's real simple. What does it mean? It means first and foremost to recognize that God loves you, that Jesus died on the cross to do for you something you could not do for yourself, and that's to forgive you of your sins. Realize that you're a sinner and you need Christ in your heart. Say, God, I'm sorry for all my sins. God, I'm sorry for my failures. And God, I want to someday come to be with you when I die and when I pass from this phase up on the life. This day, I repent of my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I know that you will because you love me. And I ask Christ to come into my heart 
that I might be born again, I might be saved and become a child of the living God. Maybe there's someone here today that needs to have Christ come into your heart and into your life. It can simply happen. You can receive him right where you are or come to the altar and pray. My prayer is simply this. Don't leave this world without him. Make sure that you know him as your Savior. And of course, here again, there may be some that's already received Christ, and you may be saying, Brother Steve, I know Christ, and the message this morning relates to my life, though. And maybe God's calling for some of us to, to be the example that God would have us to be. And there may be some that are needing to make some major decisions in your life that I don't know about, but God knows about. And my prayer is this, is if God has spoken to your heart today, that you'll listen to what God so desires for you to do in your own personal life today. Will you bow your heads, please? With heads bowed and eyes closed this morning, there may be some that need to make some serious decisions this morning. In a few moments, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. Brother Tracy's going to be to my right. And Josh is going to be to my left and have two gentlemen down here. And I'll be standing in the center. But we're here this morning. And if there's any decision that needs to be made, you feel free to come. Give God his time and his way in your life. Father, I pray this morning that you'll take these few remaining moments that we have. May you just be glorified. May your Holy Spirit do his supernatural work. For we surrender these few remaining moments unto you. May you be glorified. And may your people be encouraged. For it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.